family has farmed out in the Hopewell community since, uh, I guess, probably the early 1800s. Uh, our, uh, we've got an ancestor who moved down here from uh, Frederick County, Virginia. He was born in 1755. He, he fought in the uh, Revolutionary War in North Carolina and then came down right after the Revolutionary War. So he was probably down here before 1800. And uh, uh, they settled out in the in the Hopewell community. Our, our family uh, uh, moved into my great uh, my great grandfather's house on my grandmother's side, on my father's side, uh, Webb, and uh, and we lived in that house. That house was built around 1900. It's since burned, but uh, that's where I grew up, right on 81, uh, corner of 81, and and Crestview Road. You know, we came into town to go to school, but like in the summers, uh, it seems like we'd never go to town over a couple of times during the the summer. I mean, we were so far out, we didn't think about going into town. You know, we thought we were so far out. We had a dairy farm, grew up on a dairy farm. I was born in 1949. I was the third of five children. We had a lot of fun growing up, a lot of hard work growing up out there, but. When we weren't uh, working, uh, we were usually playing some kind of ball. It, it worked out real, real well with four brothers. We always played two on two. My brother Ron is the oldest. He and the youngest, CH, would be on one side, and and Tommy and I would be on the other side. We were the second and third, and so I always, I always got beat. We never, we never were able to beat Ronnie and uh, and CH anything hardly. But it was always a lot of fun. What was 81 like back then? It was two lanes and just, uh, there weren't a lot of cars going up and down it. Very interesting time to to grow up. Uh, like I say, we were we were out there all by ourselves pretty much right in that in that area. I-85 changed things a lot when it came through. And of course, Hannah High School got built out that way and that, uh, that caused things to develop a lot more. And uh, and town just seems to be moving that way now. And where all did you go to school? Went to North Fant Elementary. Uh, that's right there where the part of the hospital is now. And uh, then I went to the old McCants. You probably went there, didn't you? Uh, and then we went to uh, Hannah High School, which is uh, now right there where, uh, I guess that's where McCants is now. Yeah, and it was new when, when I went. Uh, the boys and girls high schools had just consolidated a few years before I got there. My sister was in the first uh, graduating class when the boys and girls were together. What was Anderson like then, downtown? What was, what was Anderson like when you were coming up in all that time? <laughs> Didn't get downtown very much back then. There, most of the stores were right down on the square and everything back then. And then uh, I remember Sears moved out here on the corner of uh, of uh, Greenville Street and, and Main Street. And, and not too long after that, the Belvedere Plaza was built. And then the mall was built after that. And downtown started emptying out pretty good when all that was done. But uh, early on when I was real young, everything was, was right downtown. And you you played at Hannah. Yeah. Who all did you? Who was your coach, and who did you play for? We had Coach Honeycutt there to start with, and uh, and then he took it a, a different position after my junior year, and uh, Joe Hazel came in. I had Joe Hazel my my senior year, and then he later became principal. But uh, uh, they were great coaches, and uh, I, I think an awful lot of them. So you finished Hannah. You went to Clemson. Yeah. Played football at Clemson. Yep. When I was growing up, I always dreamed of uh, uh, playing football at Clemson. We grew up right here in the shadows of Death Valley, and, and it's one of those things you always dream of playing up at Clemson when you're here. All my brothers played at, uh, at Clemson, and we're, uh, I, th I think we have the distinction of being the only family to have uh, four brothers later in football at Clemson. And you played for Frank Howard? Yeah, yeah. What was that like? It was a lot of fun. I mean, he he was uh, he was such a character. You never knew what he was going to say or do. One of those things you never forget. We had some big wins, but overall we didn't have that much success. Uh, 
Uh, the biggest win we had when I was there was uh, over Georgia Tech in 1969. We had we always had to go down to Georgia Tech to play. They wouldn't come to Clemson. I always thought it was uh, that was a bigger rival than Carolina was back then. I mean, we wanted to beat them more than we did Carolina back then, since we hadn't beaten them in so long, and we we beat them in uh, in 69 the summer after i graduated i worked down at uh, at myrtle beach i was the activities director at the thunderbird motel and one of the guys that stayed there when i was working there that summer was an fbi agent he was stationed up in uh, washington we got to be big buddies and and uh, he convinced me that was the thing for me to do was to be an FBI agent. Back then, to be an FBI agent, you had to either have an accounting degree or a law degree. That's why I decided to go to law school. So I uh, had to go in the Army right after, uh, right after the summer. And I was stationed up at Fort Lee, Virginia, which is right below Richmond. And so I ended up, I'd go up to Washington a lot to, to see my FBI buddy up there back then. And I ended up... Uh, so I ended up going to law school. My second year of law school, uh, uh, one of my fellow students uh, asked me if I'd be interested in working for Senator Thurman. I'd never really had a lot of interest in politics or, or anything. I never met Senator Thurman. But uh, anyway, I went uh, and uh, talked to him, and uh, and uh, he gave me a job down there. So I worked in uh, in his office uh, in Columbia. Uh, at, part-time my second third years of, uh, of law school and then he asked me to go to Washington with him after that so uh, I went up there and worked uh, two years in, in Washington. And what did you do for Senator Thurman in Washington? Well my first year I was a, a legislative assistant and I, I uh, uh, covered the floor a lot uh, for the senator kept up with what was going on on the floor and uh, advised him on how to vote on uh, different bills that came up. And then the, the second year, I worked on the Senate Judiciary Committee, set up uh, hearings and got witnesses for hearings and, and uh, uh, helped him uh, develop questions for uh, uh, witnesses at the hearings and things like that. Uh, uh, very, very interesting uh, job. I thoroughly enjoyed my time up there. Well, what brought you back to Anderson? I either needed to decide I was going to be a career person in Washington or I was going to come back and practice law in, in Anderson. And, and it was a, a, an opening came up uh, as an assistant solicitor, down a part-time assistant solicitor, and uh, gave me an opportunity. So I, I got that job and gave me an opportunity to get some experience in the courtroom and also set up a private practice. And when did you become solicitor? 1980. Uh, got elected in 1980, and I was uh, 31 at the time I got elected, which uh, seems awfully young now. I didn't, I didn't think of it as being that young at the time, but it, uh, it was. And how long did you serve solicitor? 20 years. One of the hardest things for people to know is when it's time to quit, and. Uh, and I just felt like I'd done all I could do there and it was time to, to do something else. I was still young enough to do something else. I had a real interesting thing happen after that. Uh, I had a chance to do the morning show on WRIX, which was one of the most fun things I've ever done. I'd started doing Hannah football games on the radio back in the late 80s. And that was a, that was a real fun thing to do. So I got some, I had some experience in, in radio. I ran into uh, Karen Small, who was Matt Phillips' daughter, who owned WRX at the time, ran into her at a uh, orientation for uh, the students at Hannah. She had a student there, and some of my boys were there. And, and uh, she told me that uh, uh, they were looking for a new host there, and they were having some guest hosts come in and ask if I'd be interested in doing it. And, and uh, I went down there and just had a great time doing it, and ended up uh, she ended up asking me to to do it, and I did that for close to ten years, I guess. During that time, I also started working at Anderson University. Talk we, about how that happened. What that's about. We started a, a degree completion program in criminal justice there. Uh, uh, David Shirley was running the Excel program at the time, and and uh, and and he uh, uh, he asked me about coming there and helping start the uh, 
the criminal justice program. Uh, he did a lot of really good things while he was doing doing that program, uh, the Excel program. I'd majored in uh, secondary education, and and uh, I mean I always enjoyed teaching, and uh, went over there, and and uh, uh, you know that's what sort of what I'd planned to do way back was teach, and and uh, and uh, so that, that was the next thing I did. So I started uh, doing that. Uh, I still had got to do my radio show, but I did that too, and did that for a while till things got uh, we got more and more things going on here at Anderson University and didn't have time to do both, so um, uh, so I just started doing this full time. Remind people about that program that don't know much about it. Okay, we've really done a lot with it since it started. Uh, it started just as a degree completion program. Uh, the third and fourth years of a bachelor's degree, usually people would get a, an associate's degree at Tri-County Tech or one of the technical schools around or or close to an associate's degree, and then they'd come here and finish up their four-year degree. After a while, we had an advisory board meeting where the uh, police chief here in Anderson uh, mentioned the fact that he wanted to develop leaders in his department. And the only places he could send people uh, for uh, uh, to improve their leadership skills and, and criminal justice was either to the FBI Academy or up to, to Louisville to the pro program they have up there. He said, why can't we do something like that right here? And uh, 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 Jeff Black was in, uh, he was in that meeting. He talked uh, some with us back then and he was actually in the command college in Georgia program at the at the at the time, and and so we we went down and looked at what they were doing down there, and and uh, over about a a twenty month period, uh, we had our, our master's program up and running, the command college of South Carolina at Anderson University. We'd found out that there were several other schools that had looked at doing something like that over for twenty years, and nobody else had actually done it. But uh, uh, we, we got it up and going, and, and another guy that was very instrumental in, in getting the program going was uh, Dave Camp. He's a guy who uh, had been the head of the criminal justice program at Georgia State, and he had retired to uh, Hartwell Lake, and, and uh, uh, he heard about our program, and we got together, and, and he really helped put our, our program together. So uh, uh, Jeff and I and, and Dave Camp working together pretty much got our program up and going and that that made a big difference once we got that uh, master's program going I think it helps draw the undergraduate students too. And you've had a lot of students come through this program since right? Yeah a lot of, a lot of students we've got here's a directory of the graduates of the command college that we've got right here we put we update this every year and put it, uh, all the new students in there with their contact information and everything. So you kind of come full circle. You thought about joining the FBI, went to law school, and yeah. now you're training people who are going, some of them end up yeah, in the FBI. We've, mm -hmm. we've had some people in the FBI. We've got uh, a Secret Service agent right now in the, in the command college, uh, and we've had several other federal agencies. Uh, we've had, uh, of course, our sheriff here in Anderson County now is one of our graduates, uh, Chad McBride, uh, police chief uh, Stewart here in Anderson is one of our graduates. Uh, we've got uh, graduates all over the, the state now, and they're uh, a lot of them in, in very important leadership positions. Is there anything that you've learned over the years you wish you had known when you graduated Clemson or Hannah? Oh, lots, uh, an awful lot I wish I had. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I, I the program that we have, our master's program now, I always tell our students that I, I would have loved to have gone through something like this when I first got elected as, as solicitor. That would have been a tremendous help to me. I mean, there's so much that you you learn. I mean, working for uh, for Senator Thurman was a, a, a real good uh, experience for me, too. Uh, I, I, one thing I always remember that he would tell us, he was so good on constituent service. I mean, that's... Uh, I don't. I don't think anybody's ever been better at it. And he'd always tell us that uh, when you're dealing with a constituent and, and their problem might seem trivial to you, just remember it's the most important thing in their life. And uh, and I've always tried to remember that in dealing with uh, uh, with students and uh, victims' families when I was a solicitor and any anybody that uh, had to deal with. I try to remember 
but that's a real important thing to them, whatever their problem is. One other thing that, in fact, somebody the other day, it's funny that I mentioned your name and they knew you. They said, oh, that's a Touchdown Club guy. Why do you stay involved with the Touchdown Club after all these years? I've always liked football. and we, we got that, uh, the Touchdown Club started back in 81, I believe it was, back when Clemson won the national championship. And uh, Dwayne Loftus and uh, Ike Brissy, uh, who was with the Chamber at the time, uh, started it. And, uh, and I was... I was a member of it from the very beginning. I was at the very first uh, meeting. Sometime in the 90s, I started getting the speakers for the Touchdown Club. And then sometime later on in, during that time, I started emceeing the Touchdown Club. And I've been doing both those things for over 20 years, I guess now. We've got a lot of the same people who have been involved with it, uh, with it for a long, long time. Uh, Coach Jim Frazier. Uh, of course, you haven't been able to make him any funnier over there. <laughs> hey, have you seen his joke book? He, he's uh, he's got a joke book out uh, too. Jim, Coach Jim Frazier has, and uh, Bill Brissy is our president, and then a lot of other guys have gotten involved with it over the years. But it's a great way to start off a football weekend. We always meet at lunchtime on uh, Fridays at the uh, Anderson County Library. We get some really interesting speakers in and, and uh, they have a pick em contest where people try to pick the winners and losers of the week and things like that. And it's a, it's a really, really neat thing. It's also one of the largest gatherings probably of and old Andersonians that have been mm -hmm. around forever, don't you think? Yeah, and we're getting more and more new people in too. Not as, not as many as we'd like, but we're getting some new people in. But uh, tell you one of the funniest things that happened. I always try to get somebody who knows the speaker uh, to to introduce them. That's gotten to be kind of a big thing. I mean, we used to just uh, I, I'd just do a little short introduction but then i got started getting people to do it we were getting rid of some stuff at my uh, my house I, we'd call the uh habitat for humanity uh, uh folks to come get some of our, our stuff uh, that we'll clean out our attic and and the truck came out and the guy was driving the truck and i got to talking to him and and uh he said that uh he'd gone to pc and that he'd he'd played football at pc and uh, and I told him, well, that's uh, that's you know that's interesting. We got the PC coach speaking at the Touchdown Club next Friday. I said, you know, do you know him? He said, yeah, I, he was my backfield coach when I, I was there. He wasn't the head coach; he was the backfield coach. And I said, well, how would you like to introduce him? And uh, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And, and I got to thinking about it later on. I said, gosh, I don't know anything about this guy. I don't know if he knows him. I don't know. If you know, I don't feel he even show up. I don't. Anyway, he showed up and uh, and he introduced him and uh, and the coach at the time he he got up and he said, you know, I have three players' pictures in my office, and this guy was one of them. He was the leading rusher, the leading all-time rusher for PC. <laughs> I always thought that was a real real funny little situation. Well, George, what's next? What, you got anything else planned in your life? <laughs> you, you never know. I mean, things just happen. Uh, uh, I don't. I, I really enjoy what I'm doing here, and I think we've still got a lot of a lot more things to accomplish while we're while we're in this job. And I don't. Uh, I don't know what'll come after that.